Today on BRS TV Investigates, will your salt mix create crust or scale in your mixing container? Hi, I'm Randy, a host for the YouTube series BRS TV Investigates, where we take popular reefing theories, methods, questions, and products, and dive even further than what the manuals and packaging will tell you in order to put them to the test in real world environments, rate them on our scale of reef fantasy to reef certainty, and share with you, the reefing community, what we find. Today we follow up on our BRS TV Investigates test of how long can you store your mixed salt water and challenge the common belief that every salt mix will produce a crusty precipitation layer in the storage or mixing bin over time. Second to that, if there is precipitate left over, will it be white or brown? So why might answering these questions be important to the average reefer and their tanks? I'd say it really comes down to a few factors here. One, the more precipitation and insolubles left behind in your mixing container, the more you'll likely need to clean them more frequently in order to keep the precipitate from building up to a point where they can start to flake off into your freshly mixed salt water. But along with that, if there's any chance that pre-existing precipitate inside the mixing containers could act as a seed for precipitation in future batches, which is something we plan to explore further in future BRS TV Investigate salt tests, cleaning the storage bins more thoroughly or selecting salts with less precipitation may be of value. The third factor here is the common thought that all precipitation inside the storage tank is some form of calcium carbonate and that in its purest form should be completely white. However, as many reefers have reported on forums and social groups, some of the buildup they're seeing can range in color and consistency, so it's possible that something else other than calcium carbonate may also be a factor in the left behind insoluble material, and since it can be difficult to know just what those insoluble materials may be, adding them blindly to the tank may be something to consider for some reefers. What this test won't get to the bottom of is whether or not any of the precipitate or insoluble materials are good or bad for the tank. All of these salts are known throughout the reefing community to have produced solid reef tanks and awesome results. So my presumption here is that in normal instances, none of the precip or insolubles that collects in the bottom of the bin would be unhealthy to the tank, with one caveat that you do have a reasonable maintenance schedule and somewhat regularly clean out the bins, or you avoid stirring up the concentrated slurry of insolubles and dose it to the tank. Okay, so how do we plan to test this one? Well, this test will be more of a visual demonstration feeding off of our previous BRS TV Investigates testing for how long you can store mixed salt water, where we took the eight most popular salts on our site, Instant Ocean Reef Crystals and Standard Salts, Red Sea Coral Pro and Blue Bucket, HW Reefer, Brightwell's Neo Marine, and Tropic Marin Pro and Classic, and stored them unheated and uncirculated for upwards of three to four weeks. After the storage period, we noticed some leftover precipitate and insoluble particulates in several of the salts we tested, so today we want to explore those leftover particulates further by analyzing that leftover material in three stages. In stage one, we'll place two black and white poker chips in the bottom of each tank to try to get a better picture into how thick or thin the leftover particulate is by looking at the visual difference and reflection of the chips as well as the visual difference of the bulkhead when compared to a tank of pure RODI water. In the second stage, we'll scrape off all the surfaces of the glass tanks, then churn up the water with a power head to get an idea of the total amount of insolubles there were by comparing the color and clarity against our BRS eye chart placed inside each tank. Finally, for stage three, after we finish the second stage and with the power head still running, we'll run the entire 20 gallons of each mixed saltwater solution and any related insoluble material through a clean white sediment filter to get a better picture of any color gradient that the insoluble materials may have produced. Starting with stage one of our three stages, we placed black and white poker chips next to the bulkhead to get a better idea of how thick any insoluble material actually was. And I would mention here that the angle of the glass with a higher powered lens on our camera may distort the focus on these a little bit, but overall, we'll get a good idea of what's happening. Starting with a baseline of RODI water, we see pretty much a mirror image of the poker chips in the reflection underneath them, with every visible detail and gradient of shade clearly identifiable. Along with that, the bulkhead maintains its original sheen and reflection of its own, which is unimpeded by any sort of film or precipitate crust. In comparison to the RODI baseline, Instant Ocean Reef Crystals is first up, and the precipitate is what I would call somewhere between thick and thin, where you can just make out a little bit of the reflection underneath the poker chips, specifically where they change from black to white. 
I'd also point out that there is the slightest sheen to the bulkhead on the edge, but it is lightly coated. The InstaNotion Standard Salt has more pronounced reflections under the poker chips, where we can see some detail changes in the shade more clearly, where I would call this one a thinner coat of precipitate. The bulkhead also shows some light reflection to it, where there is some bit of glean on the surface. The HW Reefer Tank has somewhat thick precipitate where we can just start to see very subtle reflections under each chip and a pretty good coating on the bulkhead as well. Red Sea Coral Pro is next and right away we see that any reflection is lost under the poker chips through the thickness of the precipitate or insoluble material at the bottom of the tank. Looking at the bulkhead close up, we can also see that it also shows a thicker coat, but this is an elevated salt mix and I don't think anyone would find these results surprising. With the poker chips in the Red Sea Blue Bucket tank, we can also see that there is no reflection under each chip and more of what I would call the thicker end of precipitation, as we can also see by the dusting on the black bulkhead. The Brightwell Neomarine tank is next and shows very little precipitation in the bottom of the tank, which is evident by the most subtle distortion to the clarity of the poker chip reflection and very light dusty film on the bulkhead. Let's take a look at the Tropic Marin Classic tank where we can see pretty clearly the reflection of both chips with a light coat of precipitate distorting the clarity just a bit. And on the bulkhead we can see the same film but there is a sheen reflection of light still coming through. Lastly for this stage of the test we have the Tropic Marin Pro where I'd say we see a nearly perfect reflection under the chips where we can clearly make out all of the elements on them while at the same time the bulkhead also maintains its shine and light reflection of its own. In stage two of our analysis for color and clarity, we scrape the surfaces of the tanks to help visualize just how much precipitate and insoluble material there was by dropping our BRS custom eye chart into each tank. To reference as we go forward in this stage, here's the same BRS eye chart in pure RODI water where we see all lines are clearly legible with no color tinge to the water. Again, starting with the Instant Ocean Reef Crystals, there is some lack of clarity to some degree, but for the most part, I can make out most of the lines on the eye chart. The water is noticeably more yellow than pure RODI water with larger particulates floating around, some of which seem to have a slick coat or organic feel to them rather than the crusty particulate which we also noticed after cleaning the tanks. In the Instant Ocean Standard, we can see the letters of the eye chart are reasonably clear with a minimal notice to change in color, yet again some of the larger particles have a stringy, organic type of look to them. The HW Reefer tank is next and we can see that it is cloudy to a point where some of the lines below the orange color band are fairly tough to make out. There's also some larger particles floating around in the water that have similar organic like structure to them which is almost certainly caused by amino acids that it's stated to have and a result of storing it mixed for three weeks. After mixing up the particulates in the Red Sea Coral Pro tank, we can see that it's particularly difficult to make out the edges of the eye chart inside the tank, and in this case, I can't identify that there's much of a change to color. In the Red Sea Blue Bucket tank, we can slightly make out the edges of the eye chart, but no real letters below the waterline. As for change in color, it's difficult to make out a clear change. In the Brightwell Neo Marine tank, there's a very slight haze, but all in all, there is good clarity down all of the lines of the eye chart. There are also minimal amounts of smaller floating particulates, which are pretty rigid in structure. The Tropic Marin Classic lines are pretty clear throughout the eye chart, although there is a haze to the tank from the thin precipitation. I'd say that there is no change in color that I'm confident of, and it seems that there are very minimal visual particulates remaining in the tank. The last solve in this stage is Tropic Marin Pro where I can almost call this one nearly perfectly clear with acuity of the letters all the way down to line 12 and a couple particle remnants floating in the tank. Okay, last but not least is the final stage of our observations for each of the salt mixes where we pumped the entire 20 gallons inside each tank through the sediment filter while the water was still being churned up from stage 2. Since actual differences in color were a bit difficult to see in previous tests, we set up each filter in varying degrees of color gradients in relation to how different they were from a brand new sediment filter that was soaked in fresh RODI water. In this case, it just makes sense to show the variations next to each other as a whole rather than individually as the differences in shade were pretty subtle. As you can see here, with all of them lined up next to each other, it's tough to make out some of the changes from one to the next, so we did our best in a blind lineup to place them on a scale that showed differences in color from the control sediment filter. 
From our eyes interpretation, we place them from left to right in the following order with the Control RODI sediment filter on the far left, followed by Tropic Marin Pro, Tropic Marin Classic, HW Reefer, Instant Ocean Standard, Brightwell Neomarine, Red Sea Coral Pro, Red Sea Blue Bucket, and finally Instant Ocean Reef Crystals. I wouldn't say that these are necessarily ranked or ordered from best to worst, but rather the takeaway here for me is that although some of the salts seem to be relatively clear in relation to RODI water, actually all of them ended up having some degree of color tinge to them, to the point that I wouldn't consider any one in particular to be crystal clear or 100% perfect. One thing to mention here as well is that the color tinge we saw in this test is only after filtering 20 gallons of salt mixes that can make upwards of 150 to 200 gallons in total. So once eight to 10 times of the amount of the same salt water passes through the same sediment filter, the color gradient will be more pronounced. So is there any truth to the common belief that every salt mix will produce a crusty precipitation layer in storage or mixing bins over time? Since most of these salts we tested do have some degree of precipitate in storage, I'll rate this one a nine on the reef certainty scale. We could all reasonably expect to see varying degrees of precipitation or insoluble material at some point during storage, with some salt mixes definitely having more or less than others. As to the question of whether leftover insolubles and particulates were white or brown, well, in our example here, almost none of them were absolutely without a tinge of color, but there were differing degrees to that color overall. All right, so how can reefers use what they saw here today for their own reef tanks? From the results of today's testing, there's something to be said about the amount of time that could potentially be added to our regular maintenance rhythm of thoroughly cleaning our mixing bins or storage containers. Thinking of the differences in where and how the salt and salt additives are harvested or mined, there's almost certainly impurities in organics that may not be refined out, which could also be a factor in what's produced inside the container. I don't think we can say one way or the other that the impurities are bad for the tank, or for that matter, even beneficial, only that if given a choice, most people would probably prefer that they weren't there to begin with. Considering the range of color we saw today, it is likely that the settled material inside the container is more than just calcium carbonate precipitate, doubly so when you combine today's results with the last Investigate salt test, where some of the salts had no noticeable drop in calcium or alkalinity over a few weeks, but did develop insoluble impurities at the bottom. So the picture here is probably more complex than it might first seem. So we've identified the effects of storage in uncirculated and unheated controlled environment and developed a clearer picture into what was left in the bins after storage. But before we move on to see if heating and circulating the salt water in storage has different impacts, let's find out first if there's any ring of truth to the idea that existing precipitation inside our mixing containers could act as a seed which could lead to faster precipitation in future batches. What we hope to discover here is if we should be cleaning our mixing containers more than we might be already, and if we aren't, is that contributing to premature precipitation and unstable levels in our bins? Finally, if you'd like to cast your vote over on our Reef to Reef thread of do you get precipitation or insolubles in your storage or mixing bins? You can find it linked in the description and on the Bulk Reef Supply sponsor page at reeftoreef.com. We'd love to see any questions you may have about salt mixes or things you'd like to see us test in future BRS TV Investigates episodes over on Reef to Reef in the comments below or even on our hashtag AskBRSTV Facebook group where the BRS crew, including Ryan and I, get in there and answer your questions directly. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to immediately get alerted to the latest and greatest BRS TV episodes as we release them. And we'll see you next time on BRS TV.